Hey guys, Chitta Fahadlings here with a subject at Neighbors Anamorphic Shooting, but doesn't quite involve scope. Today I'll be showing you how I adapted some projector lenses to use in a modern camera and how you can do the same without much effort. I don't know if I mentioned before in a live stream or not, but Schneider sent me a nice box full of lenses in support of a course I'm developing. These are all projection lenses and the scope part is pretty standard. But I still had these spherical blocks sitting around and I wanted to use everything. Zero waste kind of thinking. So this is one of the spherical blocks. And this one's kind of advanced already. So no parts left behind. Plus, you can find a lot of these projector lenses for cheap on eBay. The total cost minus the lenses was around 55 bucks, including there a pair of Dremel bits that I destroyed in the process. The first step was to find out if I could adapt this to a modern mount. It relies fundamentally in what's the fling, flange distance of these lenses. How far do they have to sit from the sensor to make a sharp image. If you're not familiar with the idea of flange distance, I made another video on the subject of adapting lenses and you can check that out. So I try to figure it out by holding the lens in front of the camera. Close focus is never a problem, but I also managed to find infinity. It was just under the distance for an EF mount. So I decided to hack the system and commit to a lens that goes beyond the mount. I wanted to go with EF, although most of my cameras are mirrorless, because EF is a very popular mount choice, and lots of people could follow this tutorial afterwards. Now I needed something to allow focusing, or moving the lens back and forth in a controlled way. Lucky for us, there are lots of options of cheap helicoids out there. I didn't measure things properly and, th and thought my lenses could go through the whole of an M42 mount. So I went with a 52 millimeters to M42 helicoid with the size going from 17 millimeters when contracted to 31 millimeters when expanded. Wow, this is very long, not 31. This is longer than that. Uh, I got one with brass threads because they run smoother. The price was a bit higher, like five or 10 bucks, but the performance is much superior. It's important to say that there are lots of sizes and lengths for these helicoids. And you can probably find one that matches whatever weird projection lens you're trying to adapt. 
just go on eBay and look it up. There's a link in the description for the seller I bought this from. When the helicoid arrived, I noticed my oversight with the diameter of the back of the lens. I'd have to grind the whole bottom of the helicoid, plus a big chunk of the M42 to EF adapter as well. To make matters worse, I wasn't too familiar with using a Dremel for this. This is my account from the day. So here's the deal. I'm outside and I'm gonna be trying to grind some adapters to fit my Schneider lenses. This is what it's looking like. I got my Dremel here. And this is the lens. So this is gonna go inside of this tube here, which fits almost perfectly. So I gotta grind all of that stuff here. And then this is my focusing helicoid, which also takes the lens. And I gotta grind all of these, like these threads, and then all of this bottom area there so the lens can slide through. Uh, these are my safety goggles, and this is my setup. I got a vise here, the adapter is gonna come in here, and we're gonna Dremel the aluminum off using this tip. That hopefully, will work. These are Ariana sunglasses, so they're extra stylish. <laughs> Let's go. This guy got completely messed up. But we succeeded in making the lens fit through here. Nice. And through here. Also nice. So I got this. And the idea is to stick Like this. So here we go. After all the grinding, there was no more threads on the back of the helicoid, and I resorted to epoxying the adapter directly onto the focusing mechanics. The core mechanics were ready. Now I needed a way to secure the lens inside the focusing jacket, as I will call it. Sure, I could just glue it, but that would be criminal. Plus, I wanted to be able to use the same jacket for at least two different lenses, these ones here. I needed a swappable solution with good accuracy and low cost. That sounds like a 3D print job. So I got my numbers, uh, made my models, and went to Patrick again from Camera Tags on Instagram to get these jackets printed. So this is a jacket, and this is another jacket, and they fit super tightly around the lenses and they have 52 millimeter threads at the top, so I could screw those into the focusing jacket. Since I was already getting things printed, I also modeled a front piece that allowed me to screw 67 to 77 millimeter step rings onto the lenses and let me use filters freely, besides giving me a nice standard 80 millimeters outer diameter. Once all the parts were added, this is how the lenses look. So this is the lens with the step ring, so this is 77 mil threads, and this goes into the focusing jacket. So it just slides in. I have to focus this forward a bit to make it reach, and then I just screw it in. And boom, this is how it works. I can quickly swap them on the jacket, and I could use some fine tuning on this red lens 
because it can focus way past infinity. Remodeling the 3D printed tube could fix that, but I'm happy with what I got for now. I did a live stream on this process a while back, and when I mentioned that you're stuck with wide open lenses because these don't have aperture blades, someone suggested me to get an iris adapter from eBay. So I went hunting and I grabbed one from EF to MFT. And this is how it looks. It's pretty neat. <laughs> so I've given these lenses not only a focus ring here, but also an aperture ring. It's amazing to see how everything works out in the end. The more I tackle these hardcore DIY projects, the more inspired I am to try bolder experiments. To top everything off, I added lens caps and I've been shooting a bunch of tests on these guys. Are you already itching to go out and find some random unmounted lenses and try to adapt them? Let me know in the comments below what you think of these mods. I hope you learned something cool here today and I'll see you soon. Chit for headings, out.